Welcome to Discovering. I keep saying spring is right around the corner. It's turning out to be a pretty long corner. But that doesn't mean we can't get on the water. It's time for early season walleyes on the Menominee River. We'll catch them, then we'll cook them. And we'll check out a gun and knife show. Stick around, that's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan It's April, and winter still seems to have a pretty good grip on the Upper Peninsula. If you're a fisherman, you've spent the last several months fishing through the ice, and it's that time of year when you're dying to get out on the open water. If you're a walleye fisherman, one of the first places to do that is on the boundary waters of the Menominee River. Walleyes move into the river, waiting for the water to warm up to spawning temperature. And we were there to find out if they'd arrived. Same old, the old jigging minnow. Through the lips, stinger hook, water's cold. Today's uh, first day out in the boat, water's cold, water's about 34 degrees. I like to use live bait to start, stinger hook just seems to work a little bit better. That's what you want, that, that's, that, that looks beautiful. It can't look much better. The only way it looks better, when there's a walleye hanging off the end of it. <laughs> first one vertical jigging this year. Oh, nice fish, dude. Stinger hook. Look at that. Good job, Mr. Korch. Ooh, that feels good. This is why, and I've said this on this show so many times, that that stinger hook is so important. That water's cold, very soft, very slow bite. And you can see the jig is hanging out of his mouth, and that stinger hook's in there. So, number one. Hey, George, are you having fun? I'm having a little bit of fun. A little bit of fun? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, is it ever nice. It's spring. Spring has sprung. The walleyes are snapping, and I am happy. Back in the drink. Now when we get a little closer to the spawn, then I'll start using minnow, minnow type plastics. These lure lipstick are really good baits. Twister tails, I don't have a twister tail on here today, but as the water warms up, the bite gets a little better, and you can get them just with twister tails or plastics. When we get a little warmer here, and the big females really start running in, I'll start pulling three ways. And again, I got lure lipstick. This stuff sticks on your baits. It's like kind of like waxy, so you rub it on your bait, a lot of the scents you spray on and it comes off right away where this stuff really sticks on good it really does a good job so it really helps catch the fish and i i swear by that stuff it's good stuff and then as we get on and, and the spawn is done then i'll go to flat lining and we'll go up in the shallows there all those post spawn walleyes all sit on a big hump here and that can be fantastic too we can have you know 40 50 60 fish at nights doing that and that's a lot of fun 
all hands on is what I am. I like that strike or that bite. That's what I like. I don't care for pulling planer boards. I ain't gonna say I don't do it, but I like hands on stuff. That's the way to do it. And everybody agrees with me too, wants to get out here and do that, that strike and that bite. That's just the way to do it. Being that it's spring and the water's really cold, these fish are coming in, they're real low on the bottom. I'm not marking a whole lot of fish on my fish finder, but obviously there's a lot of fish down there. So how I'm jigging today, we found out right away that it's just a little bit of a lift, drop it down. A little bit of a lift, drop it down. It, when the water warms up, then you wanna pull it up high like this, but otherwise you wanna just kinda touch the bottom, lift it up a little bit. Touch the bottom, lift it up. And, and you could tell right away when there's a fish on there. Oh, look at this fish. We're still waiting for that real big one though, but hey, we'll take these all day long. Ooh. I can catch these all day long and never get tired of it. That's a female. That's the first female of the day. Today is April 9th. We are way behind this year. Usually we're out here catching walleyes. Usually they're getting pretty close to spawning right now, but winter just did not want to let go this year. So uh, we're doing the jig. The water's really cold. It's about 34 degrees. But I see on the grab, there's quite a few fish down here and uh, we're picking up a few males. I'm sure before the day is over, we're gonna get some big ones here. We need to get a little bit farther down river where the fish like to pile before they slide up the river. There we go, fish on. It sure is nice just to be out here catching fish again, I'm telling you. Here we go, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. All right, this is why we're here. <laughs> we'll take her, we're gonna put that one back, that's another female. And you see, while well, they're getting ready to do their spawning run here, they spawn about 44 degree water temperature. And you notice that that's hooked on that stinger hook again. That's a very, very light bite. That's why I like these stingers when that water's cold. And these girls like this, these ones you want to put back because that makes more walleyes for us. But this is why we're out here. We're going to get some bigger ones yet today too. Said first time on a river this year. I gave Brian a call last night and said, hey, it's time. And of course he's like, I'll be there. <laughs> Well, we did prove that the walleyes indeed were in the river, and we caught enough to satisfy the first time on the water fish oh, on the end of a line craving. But there had to be more. If we caught this many right here, there had to be a lot more further downstream, closer to the mouth. But unfortunately, between us and that spot was a couple hundred yards of frozen river. Now, did you ever notice how the spot you want to cast to is always just a little further than your feasible casting distance? Or the spot you want to fish always seems to be on the other side of the river. I'm not sure if it was that or if the fish were really stacked up out there. But there wasn't much question. We were going to find out. a good fish here. Oh, it's a good fish. Woohoo! Baby! <laughs> this hooked right there. And they are snapping today. I'm a happy man. Happy, happy, happy. Go make us some babies, girl. Who wants to go? this one back and get some more. Oh, that's a nice fish, bro. Fishing. 
know you catch lots of fish when you just do the old flip. Nice fish in here. Spring finally. It's like too much fun. Little male. I think that's like number ten. That was cool. That one hit it. I'm sure he ate it good because he got the whole thing going. A couple hours today. This is like our 16th or 17th fish. Um, it should just get better from here. The water's gonna warm up. More fish gonna pile in the river. Hey, spring is here. It's fishing time. When it comes to eating fish, walleyes are at or near the top of the favorites menu for most folks. And in most cases, you'll find them battered or breaded, deep fried and on a plate next to some fries and a side of coleslaw. But of course, there's more than one way to skin a fish. So I was back in the kitchen with Mary Malner. So today we're going to be making a walleye chowder. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to love it. First thing I want to do is I've got some bacon that I'm just kind of getting crispy. And I'm going to take this out and drain it. It's not going to be totally healthy today. And then we're just going to pour a little bit of this right in here. We're just going to keep that nice and warm, and then we're going to sweat out the vegetables. So the first thing I'm going to do is season my walleye with a little bit of just Old Bay seasoning. We're just going to kind of pan sear this a little bit, and then we're going to chop up some onions and some celery and get our chowder going. So I've just got some sweet onions, some regular celery. We'll sweat these out as the walleye is going to be cooking. Get that in there. Walleye is absolutely one of my favorite fish. Whenever we go out to eat anywhere, I always order walleye. My husband's a perch kind of guy and I'm always a walleye kind of gal. Just love it. Nothing better. Okay, so we're just going to get this fish in here real quick. These are some nice small pieces here. We're not going to um, cook these very long. We don't want it to dry out. So you can see it's starting to cook already on the edges. Doesn't take very long here. While that's going, I'm going to just chop a couple cloves of garlic. Put that in. And now we're gonna flip our fish. It's almost done. Okay, so while that's going, I'm gonna chop up some Yukon Gold potatoes. We're gonna use a little chopper that makes quick work. They're all the same size. Makes it really, really simple and quick. Okay, so we've got our vegetables kind of sweated out a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add our potatoes and I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. Now you could use bone broth or a chicken stock if you wanted to. I'm gonna use a vegetable stock and I'm going to bring that up to a, to a boil and I'm just covering the vegetables there. So all I'm doing is just kind of breaking this up a little bit into big chunks here. Because we're using potatoes we're going to have to salt um, and layer a couple of times. We're going to do a little bit of thyme. I love thyme with a, a potato chowder and I'm going to do one drop of thyme oil just because it really brightens it. And then I like to toss in just one bay leaf. And we'll dig that out before we serve it. A lot of recipes call for a thickening agent, which would be like, um, you could mix a little bit of the vegetable broth or a flour and make a roux and kind of thicken it that way. I don't want to do, I don't want to use any um, flour, any wheat in here. Um, so I'm going to just do it with a russet potato and that'll break it down. It's real starchy. It's gonna break it down and it'll just be real nice and creamy after we add the half and half in the heavy cream. Just a russet that's already shredded and I've had it soaking in cold water. We're just gonna put a little bit of that in and this is gonna be our thickening agent. So as that cooks, that russet will break down and just make it nice and creamy. 
So we use the Yukon Golds because they'll hold their shape better. That or a red potato would be really good. If you use just a russet, it would totally break down. So that's why we shredded it to use it for the thickening agent in here. So we just have to wait for this to come to a boil. Can you see how thick this is starting to get? As this russet's starting to break down, the broth is getting real nice consistency to it. We're gonna take the bay leaf out and I'm going to just blend this. A I'm not gonna blend the whole thing. We're just gonna do a little bit. Okay, that's all we wanna do. We're gonna add our half and half. Uh, we've got about a cup and a half in here. That's gonna give you the, the nice fat mouthfeel. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of heavy cream too. And that'll make it really nice and creamy. About a quarter cup. And there again, at the end, you can kind of, um, depending on how thick it is, add a little bit more if you want to. We just want to simmer it. We don't want to bring it to a boil because we don't want that heavy cream to break. And then it'll look like it's um, a little bit curdled and, and stuff. So we want to just keep it at a real nice low simmer. Now we're going to stir in the fish. We want to add this right at the end because we don't want it to totally break down. Fish is pretty delicate, so we don't want it to break down all the way. So, let's ladle up a bowl. When we serve it, we'll ladle it up in the bowls and then we'll top it with the green onion and the bacon. A little bit of parsley. And there we have our walleye chowder. On the weekend of April 6th and 7th, I was in Bark River for the annual Gun and Knife Show, put on by American Legion Post 438 and sponsored by the Delta County Gun Owners Association. Today we're at the uh, Bark River Harris Senior Center uh, in, uh, in Bark River Township with our annual gun show. This is the fifth year that we've held this event and every year the trajectory has just gotten better and better. Uh, we've got over 80 vendor tables this year with uh, all kinds of different uh, items for sale, guns, knives, crafts, foodstuffs. Friends get to meet each other again or see each other. It's, there's a lot of fellowship, a lot of community camaraderie, and our Legion Post members um, do all the, all the work for the event. And this is our major fundraiser, uh, so it's really a, a, a lot of fun for all of us. For the sportsmen, uh, at this event you can find just about anything they would be looking for, from used guns, new guns, handmade knives, reloading equipment, um, trapping equipment, holsters, uh, there's just a, a, a cornucopia of different things that uh, will fill the, uh, everybody's interest. One of the things that's really big with the patrons who come to this event is to exchange uh, firearms that they have had for years for something different, something new. One of the unique things about this event is it's not just all about uh, firearms and knives. Uh, we have a lot of local craftsmen who display their wares for us and come up with some very, very unique items for people to, to buy as presents or just to take home for themselves. Uh, George Putman, one of our organizers, is one of, one of the most renowned blacksmiths in the state of Michigan. He hand forges all of his uh, items for sale. Uh, so that's just an example of some of the different and unique kinds of things you'll find here. Hi, I'm Mike Glass. I'm with Delta County Gun Owners Association. We are a Second Amendment group right here in Delta County. We've been around for about five years now. We uh, are very active politically, trying to maintain our Second Amendment rights. We deal with our local representatives. We try to deal with national representatives as well. There's a number of other groups that we work with. Michigan Open Carry is one great group, and they are also helping to protect our Second Amendment rights. But more than just the Second Amendment, we are a constitutional group. Uh, the Second Amendment, yeah, is part of the Constitution, but there's more to it than just the Second Amendment. We believe that the Second Amendment is the, the amendment that provides strength and safety for all of the amendments and the Constitution as well. We believe in safety first. Personally, I'm a, uh, an instructor as well. I'm also a certified range officer, so we have a great group of very well-trained folks that will be able to take anyone from the public 
and provide them with safety training. To get your CPL, you have to have safety training, but we don't offer the CPL. CPLs are offered by professional people who do that for a living. We don't compete with them, but they've all said it'd be nice to have the folks that come in at least have a bit of a background on it. So you might think of what we do as elementary school and then they'll go on to high school to get the CPL. So this is something we feel very strongly about. Anything that has to deal with safety is what we're concerned about. We've got a banquet coming up on April 21st. The money that we get from that goes to a variety of different causes throughout the Delta County area and also for uh, some folks downstate. If there is a lawsuit that looks to infringe upon the Second Amendment, we try to help fund that and pretty much all of the money that we have is other than that is spent locally. Uh, we will fund different charities around here and hope that they put that money to good use. We support sportsmen's groups. We support the Delta County Crushers trap team. The uh, Great Lakes Sport and Rec uh, gets a donation from us so that they can carry on their kids programs. You've always heard this old saw that you know children are the future. Well children are what's going to maintain our ability to own, use, and safely just possess firearms. So we feel it's very important to include kids at a very young level, safety first, and let them know what's going on. One of the services that we offer here at the show is to have your antlers scored by a professional, and he will score them as either typical or non-typical, uh, give you a point value, and then I take all that and I make up custom made certificates for each individual and mail them out to them so they've got something of record that says here's what my uh, here's what my antlers scored at. One of the best parts of this event is the food that our Legion Ladies Auxiliary prepares uh, and some people will forego meals just to be able to come here and, and take part of uh, what the ladies put together. Typically we hold this event uh, either the last weekend in March or the first weekend in April and it's a function of the Easter weekends uh, but it's all it's becoming one of those events that uh, is becoming quite an attraction. Well that's it for this week be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping and more. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 906.